वेलकम टू डॉक्टर अनिमा उपाध्याय केमिस्ट्री लेक्चर्स एंड इन टूडेज वीडियो वी विल लर्न अबाउट द फ्यूल सेल्स फ्यूल सेल्स आर गैल्वेनिक सेल्स वी हैव ऑलरेडी लर्न अबाउट द गैल्वेनिक सेल्स गैल्वेनिक सेल्स आर दो सेल्स विच प्रोड्यूस इलेक्ट्रिकल एनर्जी फ्रॉम केमिकल रिएक्शंस and these chemical reactions are spontaneous but in fuel cells the chemicals which are reacted are not stored in the cells itself like in the normal galvanic cells but they are supplied continuously at the electrodes and the electrical energy which is produced as a result of the reaction is utilized for doing many useful works fuel cells are modern day batteries let us learn fuel cells in detail before starting my lecture i'll first request you all to subscribe my channel and like and share my videos so when we are learning the fuel cells we must know the principle behind it as i have told you earlier the fuel cells are galvanic cells which converts chemical energy into electrical energy and the supply of chemicals is maintained continuously at the electrodes a typical fuel cell consists of an anode and a cathode an electrolyte layer is placed between the electrodes the su supply of fuels in the form of methanol or oxygen or hydrogen is done at the anode and oxidant that is the air is supplied at the cathode the electrochemical reactions that takes place at the electrodes produces electric current and this electric current is driven from the cell and it is used to perform the work here is the construction and working of a typical fuel cell you can see in the figure that the fuel is supplied at the anode and the oxidant that is the air is supplied at the cathode the two electrodes are separated by an electrolyte and therefore the representation of a fuel cell is written as fuel at the anode oxidant at the cathode and in between is the electrolyte the anode accompanies oxidation with the liberation or loss of electrons and cathode accompanies reduction of the oxidant by accepting the electrons which are released at the anode as a result of which the electrons are produced we can classify the fuel cells into various types and there are many ways of classification of fuel cells also the three important bases i will discuss in this video first is on the basis of fuels second is on the basis of electrolytes and third is on the basis of temperature so first basis that is the basis of fuels it can be classified into direct fuel cells indirect fuel cells and regenerative fuel cells the direct fuel cells are those where the fuels that is hydrogen or methanol is supplied directly at the anode indirect fuel cells are those where the hydrogen is first generated from the organic materials or from renewable sources and it is then stored afterwards it is directed to the anode third the regenerative fuel cells where the spent reactants are used to generate the hydrogen second basis is on the basis of electrolytes it is differentiated into alkaline fuel cells molten carbonate fuel cells phosphoric acid fuel cells proton exchange membrane fuel cells and solid oxide fuel cells so the first three types of fuel cells is the one in which the electrolyte is in the liquid state 
whereas the last two types of fuel cells are the ones where solid state electrolytes are used. On the basis of temperature, we can classify fuel cells into three types. Low temperature fuel cells, moderate temperature fuel cells and high temperature fuel cells. When the fuel cells works below 100 degree centigrade, it is called low temperature fuel cells and example is hydrogen oxygen fuel cell. When the fuel cells working ranges between 100 to 600 degrees, it is called moderate temperature fuel cells and example is phosphoric acid fuel cells. The high temperature fuel cells works above 600 degree centigrade. And it uses solid electrolytes like solid oxide fuel cells. So this is how we can classify the fuel cells into various types. Depending upon the type of fuel used, type of electrolyte and working range of temperatures. There are many advantages of fuel cells. Fuel cells are eco-friendly because the byproducts are non-toxic. They have no moving parts. As a result, there is no wear and tear and therefore very little maintenance is required. They undergo silent operation. There is no need of charging these cells and then they can produce direct current for prolonged periods. But there are few limitations of fuel cells also. The cost of power is very high because of the expensive electrodes like platinum, ruthenium, they are used, rare earths are used in the electrodes as electrode materials. The fuels are in the form of gases and therefore their storage is a matter of concern. The hydrogen is stored under high pressure. Same is the case of methanol. Power output is moderate and to obtain a desirable voltage battery of fuel cells is required. But there are many applications and many useful applications of fuel cells. It is used in auxiliary power generators. It is used in space vehicles, in car engines, in modern automobiles. We want to use fuel cells. The domestic lighting and heating appliances also. We can use fuel cells. It has many military applications and in large scale power production. So the major applications are very, very important and therefore fuel cells are important. Please subscribe my channel and for studying more about the fuel cells and the types of fuel cells, keep watching my upcoming videos. Thank you.